On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1969. We're going to be taking a look at Tom Jones, and he's going to be performing I Can't Stop Loving You. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we did have a previous analysis on Tom Jones, but unfortunately that got blocked on copyrights. So we're going to be doing another one tonight, but this time looking at Tom's voice in a little bit more detail with the pitch monitoring software up on screen. And because of the song that he's performing, we'll compare it to the version that probably everybody knows by Ray Charles. So I'm going to let it play from the beginning, including Tom's walk onto the stage, because there are things to point out about that as well, musically, believe it or not. But we will jump into the analysis probably about halfway through. So as always, there's a link in the description below so you guys can click on that if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it. But let's see how Tom gets on. I can't stop loving you. I've made up my mind. Yes, I have to live in memory. Yeah. Of such a long sometime. And I am going to jump in here because we're starting to just press on the accelerator a little bit. Performance wise, you can see that Tom's starting to open up a little bit vocally, but starting to put on more of a show as well. Putting on a show as well as a huge part. And as soon as Tom gets on stage, you can see how confident he is just skipping on. <laughs> and he is just one of those performers that seems like you can't wait to get out there. You get some performers who, you know, might seem a bit nervous and take a little bit of time to get into it, but that's certainly not the case with Tom. And this is what's really interesting to look at with so many different performances, all the things that will fly under the radar, especially if you're not a performer yourself or a musician because Tom is gonna be hitting, I believe, a G sharp four as his first note, belting it in chest voice, but you've got to have a reference point. You can't just go on stage and just belt out a note and be pitch perfect without a guide, unless you have perfect pitch, <laughs> which is a totally different thing, being able to either hear a note and just say what that note is without any reference point, or being able to 
producer note and just be bang on. So, when Tom goes on, have a listen out for the band. And <laughs> really softly in the background there, we had an E major chord, which is going to be the key of the song. And I think we have a even quieter arpeggio being picked through. And it leads me to believe that Tom, when he's going up on stage, all of this kind of undoing his bow tie that he's got on and saying, you know, that he's, you know, really nervous. That's just showmanship, playing to the crowd so that he's not standing there and obviously listening to the chord. Of course he's listening because he needs his reference point, but this is all part of the showmanship to make you part of the performance, but to just have all of these elements that have to be completed, but yeah, make them not noticeable so that it just seems like he's on stage and while you're distracted, he's now got his key and he belts out the first note of the song. And here it is. I can't stop and we'll see on the pitch monitoring software, because he's got his key, that G sharp four is bang on. So, really accurate vocally and you'll notice on the pitch monitoring software the vibrato that Tom has as well which goes above the note more often than not and it can be quite wide and you know we can get a couple of semitones involved maybe even you know three semitones with that really wide vibrato depending on the note and the expression that he's giving to it just to get the guitar out to demonstrate because some people might think oh but the first chord we hear is an A, and it is, but the key of the song is E. So when we have this really light chord and even lighter arpeggio, that's giving Tom his reference point to then jump into the A, and we've got a standard blues progression here. So it's gonna be our E, our A, B, A, down to E. Just to mention about the guitar, because it is really subtle in this performance, and we haven't got a dominant rhythm going on this high in the mix. This is all about letting the orchestra do their job and just, you know, come in and out with lead lines and fills just to add to the composition, you know, rather than, you know, try and take the limelight. So, like I said, we've got the E and you'll hear kind of these little fills that are really subtle. That kind of thing keeping that rhythm, little sus4, run up to the A, and we've even got sometimes a little bit of lead, including a kind of bluesy bend going on. We're kind of going so that you can't really hear it, but then as soon as we get as soon as you get a little line like that, it pops out because we haven't been oversaturated by hearing. Because then, once you throw in a little lead line, your ear is already attuned to how loud the guitar is and kind of where it sits in the mix. So it's not gonna pop out as much. So like I said, let the orchestra do their job and just come in to add to the composition. The other thing about Tom's version of this song, when we compare it with Ray Charles's version, it's actually a semitone lower. And I think a lot of that is to do with Tom actually hitting this G sharp four as soon as we start the performance and Ray not even singing this. So Ray would have had to have hit an A4. And if we look over at our piano, we'll be able to see that the A4 is right at the top end of the male tenor range. So it means that Tom has just taken this down a semitone. So it's still way up there and he's hitting this in chest voice. So it is a heavy note to start with. And Tom's voice just had so much body at the top end of his range, but just the top end of his chest voice, it was so thick and it occasionally had a rasp in there when he wanted it as well. But on the Ray Charles version, 
these notes up here are sung for the most part by the choir, the, the backing singers. So it means that Ray didn't have to worry about hitting all these notes. And this is why when Tom sings it, I think it's a semitone lower because the A4 might just be a little bit too high for his chest voice. I'm sure that he'd be able to hit it in chest voice, but there's no point in making the top note of the song, especially when it's the first note that you're going to be singing, there's no point making it more difficult than it needs to be. So you can hear in Tom's voice that he is all over this and we can see he's all over it pitch wise as well. Really thick tone, great vocal cord connection. We'll have a quick listen to Ray's version and hear the choir at the beginning. <laughs> So listen to where Ray comes in. He's kind of coming in, I made up my mind. So he's quite low, whereas <laughs> when we go to Tom's version, I can't stop and you know, talk about getting your attention because of keeping these notes in chest voice. So he's not getting into it like, I can. And being really light with it, he's leaning into it with I can, <laughs> putting all of that body there. So, like I said, Tom's got such a distinct voice, and you only need to hear this G sharp four just the first time to know it is Tom Jones. And that's such a rare thing to have, you know, as a vocalist, you know, full stop or period, <laughs> as you say in the USA. But we'll get back into the performance where we left it. Just quickly, great example of this vibrato and how wide it is. I did say that we had three semitones, but we can see here that we start off three semitones, but then Tom just lets loose and we've got what? One, two, three, four semitones. You could even argue, yeah, a little bit more than that. So really wide vibrato, but he just changes it up as the how he feels in that moment, how he wants to sing the particular note. But uh, let's get back into it. And there we have it. I mean, Tom's voice, he just uses it like an instrument. He has so many bluesy lines that he throws in there and very much like the guitar that you can hear in the background. When I said about having this, you know, these little bluesy lines, this is exactly what Tom's doing with his voice. And when we go back again, don't let it fly under the radar, the range that we've got going on here, because you'll sometimes see the vocal lines on screen going, you know, all the way down to, you know, 
the G sharp three and the A sharp three as well. So it means that we're going an octave at least. I mean, we're going, you can see an A sharp three down here uh, just to signify my point. And we were singing the octave above that previously. So it shows that Tom's runs vocally are spanning an octave. And if I was to demonstrate that on the guitar, it means that the line starts here and it's going to be really similar to what I just played actually. We've got this. So that's what Tom's doing with his voice actually in this phrase. Let's have a listen to it. Yeah, so we had that. Um, actually, we went. It's like that. So he went minor with it again, just that typical blues thing of mixing uh, major notes with minor notes, but here predominantly minor. You can do different degrees of a pinch. If I go like that on my guitar and go uh, uh, vocally, you can do exactly the same thing of just going, doing a really subtle uh, uh. So you almost can't tell it's in there, but this is just the subtlety of singing, expression, and microtones. <laughs> being able to change a note ever so slightly so that it's detectable, but you haven't gone up a semitone. You know, real subtlety, but that is all over this performance. And it's great because it gives you an indication if you do play guitar, what the great vocalists do, that they're really just playing their vocal cords like an instrument. Obviously to have that ability is just on another level, but when they let loose, they're just playing their vocal cords, playing all of these blues lines, and just doing it, you know, at the drop of a hat, just instinctively, however they feel at that time. And that goes for vibrato as well. So this is why it's great. If you can learn to play an instrument such as the guitar, you can throw in, you know, you know, there was a little pinched harmonic in there, but if you want to get wide with your vibrato, like a vocalist does, then you can do or subtle and speed it up a little bit with a tighter vibrato. So that's what's great about the guitar. Obviously you've got to learn to play the guitar with that level of mastery that you can play whatever vibrato you feel like playing at that particular time. But it means that you can elevate your guitar playing to the level of a great vocalist. So when your voice is going through the guitar and when your guitar is singing, it's gonna sound interesting because it's like listening to a great singer. Something else to mention before we finish is that this was written and originally released by Don Gibson. And uh, I mean, that was a huge hit in the country charts and that was back in 1958. But then Ray Charles did his version in 1962 and that turned into a bigger hit because it got to number one in the USA, got to number one here in the UK as well. And we're talking about mainstream charts here. So it had a huge impact. And I think everyone will know Ray Charles's version, but Tom Jones certainly, you know, grabs this by the scruff of the neck and does his own version of it. I mean, dynamically, it is great as well because he's not just belting in chest voice the whole time. He is bringing it down. So Tom's version is definitely standalone, but with the same arrangement, a semitone lower, but the same arrangement that Ray Charles had, just putting a little bit more energy into it as well. But thank you guys so much for requesting this video for me to take a look at. As always, keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.